Hey everybody, so Elden Ring, the uh, Shadow of the Erd Tree update, has just updated to reduce the difficulty in the game. However, before I talk about those changes, and they aren't very big, so I'm, I'm not going to spend that much time on them. Uh, before I go over those changes, I just want to talk about how Dark Souls games have pretty much always done this. They've pretty much always released in a state and then tone down the difficulty, sometimes rather significantly tone down the difficulty afterwards, because I'm sure a lot of people look at them reducing the difficulty of the DLC as I'm selling out or going into a casual audience, blah, 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 blah. No, that's further from the truth. In fact, every single Dark Souls games that I know of has released in a state that was, in fact, too difficult, and then later toned down the difficulty once uh, more people got their hands on the game and feedback was heard. Now, in order to talk about this, the first thing we're going to talk about is the very first patch to the very first Dark Souls game. Well, not actually the very first patch, but the very first big patch. I should put it that way, because there were uh, two tiny little like hotfix patches. But then there was a very significant patch to Dark Souls 1 immediately afterwards. This patch increased the amount of souls gained. Now, to be clear, there was, there were no official patch notes, so people have guessed. Uh, it wasn't two to two to five times more souls. Those are runes for Elden Ring players. So imagine they increased the runes in the game, the amount generated, by about four times. It wasn't two to 2.5. It was about four times more souls generated. So you just got about four times more souls. Damage was reduced on many mobs. HP was reduced on many mobs. The range at which enemy mobs aggroed onto you was reduced. Some mobs had lower poise. The amount of humanity um, that should be in here. Humanity, humanity. Oh, I can't find it. I'm not going to try to spend... Oh, wait, here it is. The humanity item drop rate had a 10 drop rate. It was increased to 210. So the amount... Of humanity that you dropped from normal enemies went up by 21 times you got 21 times um more humanity the amount of equipment you could carry went up by about six to ten points once again there was no patch note so people are just kind of guessing i'm sure someone could compile an official list but you get the idea ghosts and skeletons originally did not drop souls at all you got no experience from killing uh, ghosts and skeletons. Blah, 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 blah. My point here is that this is the very first big patch for the very first Dark Souls game, and they significantly toned down the difficulty. One thing I do like to say um, is that, man, if games journalists gave vanilla Dark Souls 1 a 9 out of 10, I think games journalists must be on a higher understanding of reality than the rest of us because I don't think anyone would actually really enjoy playing vanilla Dark Souls 1 that much. I, I think it could be like a fun game to like grind and like a horribly difficult game. But oh my god. I imagine imagine playing a game like that where you can either get enough points to not get one shot in your levels or enough points to actually use a weapon capable of dealing damage. Oh, and, and that's another thing, by the way. The amount of damage you did in the game was also significantly increased. So, anyway, Dark Souls 2, um, well, it didn't get an initial patch to, you know, kind of address things, or maybe it did. I'm, I'm not that big up on my Dark Souls 2 patches. I'm sorry. I don't know every patch of every game. It did eventually get a complete overhaul in the Dark Souls 2 Scholar, the first Sin Edition, wherein they did a lot of different changes to enemy placement. Some areas they made harder. Some areas they made easier. The general idea was that some of the most difficult areas they made easier, while some of the easier areas they made harder. Um, they also made some bonfires easier, some stuff like that. It's debated whether or not this actually made the game easier overall or harder overall. To this day, it's still debated. I'm sure people in the comments will have their own opinion on it. But uh, it was at the very least an attempt to rebalance the game. Now, for Elden Ring, I compiled, in my opinion, probably the three biggest changes uh that they did to the game uh i was gonna go look up the patch notes but then i got lazy so i just off the top of my head remembered things so originally radon was nerfed not dlc radon base game radon base game radon was nerfed 90 percent of the weapons in the game have gotten buffs by this point even on the shadow of the Erd tree patch 
they were still buffing many weapons, including entire classes of weapons like great axes were being buffed. Um, so for those of you saying that, uh, oh my God, it wasn't made that easier. If you were using like the best five weapons in the game, the best 10% of the weapons in the game, then yeah, you probably didn't notice that much. For those of you who colossal weapons are now attacking at like twice the speed, where great axes are now attacking at like twice the speed, where a significant amount of weapons have received massive damage buffs, to those of you guys, the game has gotten significantly easier. If you read guides and only used the best weapons, you probably didn't notice it. Me, I went back and I played through Elden Ring after having not played it for like a year and a half, two years, and I noticed like, oh my god, so many of these weapons are actually viable and usable now. I remember when I originally played through the game, I had to literally theorycraft. I, I think I, if you go back and look at the VODs of me playing through the game, I think I theorycrafted for like five hours um, simply on trying to find which weapons were actually good. Eventually, I used, like most other people, the Blasphemous Blade because I realized, oh yeah, this one just seems blatantly better than any other faith weapon. By the way, faith scaling in Elden Ring is still miserable. Uh, I'm kind of hoping they patch faith to do something. Nerf Blasphemous Blade or something, but man, like 90% of faith weapons just suck. And and it's like the one big hole, in my opinion, in itemization for the DLC still. Um, especially with the last boss in the game, shockingly being wholly effectively immune. It kind of sucks to try to use faith builds, like actual faith builds, when their spells are eh, their weapons are eh, and they got like two viable playstyles. But I'm not going to move on that. Additionally, another change that people seem to wholly go over is duo bosses have been nerfed basically into the ground. Um, one of the changes was that, oh, I forgot another change. Uh, hold on here. Way easier weapon upgrade. Oh, I forgot about that change, too. If you guys can think of any changes I'm missing, make sure to list them. Um, duo bosses used to both attack you at the same rate. Now it seems if one boss is attacking you, the second boss, or third, or fourth, or however many are there, will attack with like an 80% reduction to their attack speed. So while the second boss might attack you eventually they will basically spend the majority of the fight standing there doing absolutely nothing while you 1v1 the other boss this most affects um renala or relana god i get them confused now the the mage boss at the top who summons a giant thing and is actually secretly ronnie haha -ha, right anyway it mostly affects her and it affects godskin duo those are the two big ones it also affects some of the dungeon bosses but those aren't that big a deal um, a lot of people don't talk about how Godskin Duo basically went from being one of the hardest bosses in the game to being easily soloable without, you can, you don't need to use any summons at all anymore. I would say at release, you could definitely still solo him. I agree. Like, I'm not trying to say you couldn't do it, but, um, me in particular, I, I couldn't beat him without summoning. He just attacked so much and I just was not obviously, uh, dodgy enough to deal with it, but. The second time around, I easily trashed through him. I easily trashed through him without using a summon. Like, the second boss who's not attacking you basically just stands there and waits and does nothing. Um, one last thing I want to go over is it is way easier to do weapon upgrading. Um, I think they reduced the cost of the smithing stones by like 70 or 80% and made a significant more amount drop around the world. This allows you to have more than one upgraded weapon in particular. And again, in particular, it does mean that if you swap your weapon, you don't end up uh, having to farm either for like nine hours or uh, you can actually get them to a decent upgrade amount. So yes, Elden Ring itself was also made in a lot of ways way, way, way easier. Depending on what weapon you used, this game could have been made significantly easier since launch. So what have they done? Okay. Uh, probably not that much after the lead up. I just wanted to do this lead up because I know a lot of people were going to complain um, that, oh my God, they're making the game easier for casuals. Guys, they have always done this. My opinion, and, and this is what I think happens, I think they play test the game for about a year and they're consistently bad at guesstimating how good first timers will be at the game. If you want to play the game probably more the way they play tested it before they nerfed some stuff, 
playing like new game plus maybe three four five somewhere around there um that's probably where i would if i had to just straight guesstimate where they beat the game um obviously they can't make the game absurdly difficult for first timers because otherwise then no one will be able to beat the game hence the problem with the current dlc right so uh attack and damage negation curve of schedule tree blessing has been revived the attack and damage negation has been increased for the first half of the maximum amount of blessing enhancements and the second half will now be more gradual so the first 10 Skato Tree Blessings will be significantly more important, and the second half, the next 10, will be significantly less important. However, less you think that 20 Skato Tree is the same, no. The attack and damage negation granted by the final level of the Blessing Enchantments has been slightly increased. Okay, so your first couple of Skato Tree Blessings are significantly more impactful. The next 10 are less impactful, but still more impactful than they were before this patch. In other words, by the first Skato Tree Blessing you pick up in this patch, you are already taking less damage and dealing more damage than you were before this patch. Some people have commented, uh, there's no actual numbers here, but I'm sure someone has data mined it. From what I've seen, but I have not personally played the game to test, it seems that you deal about 10% more damage and take 10% less damage at 20 Blessings now. Uh, this should, hopefully, allow people to beat the final boss without using bleed builds, as normal damage will be higher. It should also mean that the first bosses no longer have literal one-shot grabs. And, uh, in particular, it should mean that the first bosses aren't completely obliterating people. Me, I personally noticed that once you got to about 18 blessings, the game felt significantly closer to Elden Ring. It felt like it was playing at two times speed, but it, the, the damage and damage dealt felt closer to base Elden Ring. Not quite there, but it felt, you know, like like comparable almost. But like before you got to high blessings, it was just a complete blowout. People will say, well, I dodged rolled everything and I beat the game. Sure, I congratulations. Like here, round of applause. Great, dude, you did it, right? But the problem is the game still has mixed reviews because people found this way too difficult. The problem is... um. Every single boss in the DLC, basically every single boss was harder than Melania, starting at Renala. Um, and due to that fact, the vast majority of people couldn't progress through the game. I tried a lot of co-op to help people out, and let me tell you, I do understand that a lot of people going into co-op had less Skadu Tree blessings. I believe in co-op, uh, you get the host's Skadu Tree, maybe? I'm not really sure about that. Certainly wasn't getting my own at any rate. And I did notice a lot of people going in there with too little, but the problem is the vast majority of people were not using heavy armor with all the defensive talismans. I've seen a lot of people say, if you use four defensive talismans and heavy armor and 60 endurance, then the bosses don't hit that hard if you're at 14 Skadu Tree Blessings. Like, congratulations, right? Once again, round of applause. You did it. You stacked every defensive buff and now you're tanky. Good job, buddy. But for those of you... Or for the vast majority of players who probably liked using talismans that weren't just stacking four defensive talismans for the people who liked wearing armor that wasn't heavy armor um Renala being able to potentially two-shot you in the same ability uh and yes I have seen more than a fair you know when I tried to co-op Renala and I tried to help people beat her I saw more than my fair share of hosts literally get two-shot because she would swing one sword and swing the other sword in her combo. They would mistime the dodge roll on the first uh, attack, so both would hit, and they'd just be dead. And, look, I don't care what your opinion is, but I don't think it's fair to rely on every player stacking every defensive item in the game, and that's where a lot of opinions have been. So I definitely think this is a good change right here. In addition to that, uh, we have seen down here... Other balance adjustments as well as bug fixes are planned for a future patch. So it is highly likely, highly likely going into this next patch that we will see more nerfs and tone downs. My personal opinion where I would like to see the majority of the nerfs done. One, let me write this down here. Let me write this down. Um, Co-op needs single target aggro. What I mean by this is when you co-op a boss, when you summon players for a boss, 
the entire combo of the boss needs to target a single player. This would allow other players to actually hit the boss, and while they might get hit by by, by some backswings and stuff like that, um, right now, if you if you've ever tried to summon, like if you ever tried to like help someone kill bosses, if you ever tried to summon in, uh, put down your sign, etc. I highly recommend you get this experience yourself first off, so you have an opinion here. But uh, I really think, in my opinion, that the entire combo needs to target one player. Because they will swing once at a player, swing once at another player, swing once at the third player, swing once back at the first player. And it basically means that no one can attack the boss until their entire target combo is done. If the entire combo targeted one player, this would allow the other players to play the game more uh, fairly. And it would mean that co-op was better. A lot of people keep saying that co-op is going to make the game easier and that will allow players to beat the game. I think for basically every spec in the game, co-op actually makes the game harder. The amount of buffs the boss gets and the fact that um, both players can't actually be hitting the boss. Because in Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, the boss will do an attack and then everyone else just beats the crap out of them while they're doing it, right? In the Elden Ring DLC, even most of the time when you co-op, everyone does an attack, then everyone runs up and you know beats the crap out of them. But the problem is, in this game... In the Elden Ring DLC, um, that's not true. The bosses will change, they'll, they'll attack so much so often and change aggro so often that I think co-op for most builds actually makes the game harder. The one build that I think actually does good from co-op is Mage Build because they stand so far in the back that they never get aggro. And I have still seen them get aggro, mind you. I've still seen Ranala jump across the entire map and kill a mage. I've seen her sprint the entire map in like two seconds. She just and two shot my mage. Okay. Um, the second change I think needs to happen, and this is gonna sound really jank, and I know that I know going I, I know this won't happen, but I'm just gonna close the video on this. Uh these are like the two changes I think needs to happen. I'm gonna close the video on this though. Um defensive talismans need to be nerfed base defenses increased the problem right now and i'm seeing this recommended everywhere every single build where people are recommending people beat the game is like three defensive talismans and one aggro or four defensive talismans for those you don't know the defensive talismans in the game particularly from the dlc are so goddamn good that they will basically overshadow every aggressive talisman in the game. Not all of them, but basically all of them. At the very least, I've seen practically every build use the physical damage talisman and then whatever magical damage talisman that the boss does. I've seen at least two. Now, yes, if you get perfect at dodge rolling and you dodge roll everything, great, that's fine. But the problem is the defensive talismans are just too good and they're not really like tank build talismans anymore. They're just, I hope I don't get two shot talismans. So now people can say they're a crutch for new players. At this point, what do you guys not call a crutch for new players? Summons are a crutch. Co-op is a crutch. Defensive talismans are a crutch. Heavy armor is a crutch. Shields are a crutch. Bleed is a crutch. Overpowered weapons are a crutch. Scatter tree. I've seen people say scatter tree blessings are training wheels now. Jesus Christ. What? Okay. Honestly, I beat the, the entire DLC. I beat everything. Magically, I seem to be the only player who didn't beat the DLC and then and then instantly become a, a raging asshole dickwad who immediately insults everyone who doesn't beat the DLC. Wow. Okay, let me be clear, and I want to say this for people who are still at this part in the video. When I criticize Elden Ring, when I criticize Dark Souls, I'm not insulting you. I'm not insulting you, the person watching this video. A lot of people seem to take these games and beating these games as some, like, moral superiority like you're just better than other people i'm not insulting you great you beat the game you beat the game before scatter tree blessings were buffed good job once again round of applause right but like people need to stop taking this shit so seriously and need to stop taking it like a personal attack on them that's all i need to say like like get a grip guys it is a video game okay so thank you all for watching thank you everybody have a great rest of your day Bye bye